Hello everyone. If you have watched our walkthrough video already, you know that the TVs are not my favorite thing. And that's because the sound quality is quite poor. So I have maybe an option here. I don't know. Um, this little sound bar, yeah, well it has an HDMI port, it has a normal coax speaker port, and it has an auxiliary port like a headphone jack. This particular TV has a headphone jack down here underneath, and that's what I hope can plug into here and let the sound quality play. But I gotta figure out where to put this thing because there's no shelf. I could put it up top, maybe, but it doesn't sit up here. There's screw posts in the back, so you could hook it to the wall or hook it to the wall up here. But I'm not really excited about screwing into this wall. Not opposed to it, but I'm not excited about it. This thermometer deal here is just up there with command hooks. So I may see if I can command hook this thing. But it might be just a little bit too heavy because it's pretty, pretty robust. But if I could put that right there, that would be ideal. So I'm going to see, A, how it sounds. That's the number one factor. Blair doesn't have an issue with the speakers on the TV, but I do. It sounds, I have to turn it up so loud, and when a commercial comes on, it is very, very, very difficult for me to hear anything. Now, I did have an option before I ordered this. So we have this uh, Bose, which is an excellent speaker. And I can plug the headphone jack into there, and I can plug the other end of the headphone jack up there. And this speaker works fantastically. But, like most of us are, I'm lazy at points. This sound bar sounds really good. Well, I assume it sounds good according to the reviews. But it comes with a remote, so I can turn it up and down. With this one, it's really strange. Like, if I want to mute the TV, like a phone call comes in or something, I can't just mute this speaker with the volume on the TV remote. I have to mute, I have to come physically disconnect the wire or mute it um, using the buttons on top. So this is a great alternative. So if this doesn't work, uh, it could be an option for us, but I'm gonna check this out first. So this TV doesn't have an optical sensor. It came with that, but it does have the standard headphone jack. So I'm gonna try that. See what it sounds like. Another issue is you have to plug this into power, so that's a factor. Okay, let me get some standard TV happening here. The folks at home remember them. You wonder whether the path even exists anymore. Well, you may get it for $13. But Big Pharma has been unfairly charging people hundreds of dollars, four to $500 a month. So there's that. Record profits, not anymore. And there's that. That sounds significantly better than the normal TV. And it has a little cool remote. I'm going to try this for a few days and see where and how I can mount this. And if I figure out a mounting solution, I'll be right back to let you know. So I did end up mounting the speaker on top of the TV, behind the TV. So it kind of, the, the speakers actually point up in the sky by straight out. It worked out really well. I'm sorry I don't have a photo of it. The rig has been stored for our next adventure, and um, but the speaker system did work really well. I, I took some command strips and command stripped the bottom of it and pushed that against the TV, and I put some other command strips between it and the wall. So it's wedged between the wall and the TV with the speakers pointed up, and it's plugged into the outlet right below the TV. Worked out really well. Hi, friends. Today we got a package in the mail right here. It's from eatpropergood.com, and... Proper Good is the food brand. Uh, they reached out to us and said, hey, would you like to try some of our meals? And we said, absolutely, we'd love to uh, look for this because this is a really easy option for RVers or campers or things like that, which is what we are and what we do. This sample pack came with two meals and I'm really excited to try these meals out. But opening up the box, uh, it sounds like Blair because she says hello, hello quite a bit. And your meals have arrived in time, so it comes with a little coupon code here and shows you all their meals. And you can also get these at Walmart, which is a pretty handy option because Walmarts are ubiquitous around the nation. But 
here's all the meals that they currently have available. Included in this box was this little special spoon right here, which is really awesome. And it has a little smile on the back, if you can see that, and a, a logo in the middle. What a great soup spoon this is. I'm really excited to use that. The two meals we received, one is chicken noodle soup, red pepper meatball soup. There's three ways to cook this. You can heat it in a microwave for about 90 seconds. You can pour the contents into a pan and heat it on medium until it's bubbling. Or you can boil in a pouch. You can put the unopened pouch in boiling water and heat it up till it's piping hot. No refrigeration is necessary, which is a really cool thing for campers, RVers, etc. Explorers of the world, I call them. What a, what a neat packaging and what a neat option. So I'm really excited to try these out. Following up on the proper good meal here, I chose to do the 90 second microwave. I got my cool spoon here and I'm about to try this meal for the first time. And again, this is the red pepper and meatball soup. In that particular microwave, 90 seconds was not quite enough. I go back and heat it again. The meatballs still won't cook all the way. But they're small little meatballs, and this is quite delicious, I must say. Very good. Serving size is one pouch, 300 calories, 25 grams of fat, 12 grams of protein, 12 grams of carbohydrates. Looking forward to checking out the other one too. I would have this again, no problem. That's pretty good. And it packs down really nice and easy. Thanks for joining. Hey everyone, I've been um, I've been looking for some chocks for the wheels and I've gone through the rubber kind, I've gone through the X chocks, I've gone through the plastic ones that act like X chocks, I've gone through just plastic ramp chocks uh, and everything in between. And I recently saw the Fastway trailer variant here and now I have some of those, so I'm going to check them out. And I'm very grateful to the Fastway company and Equalizer company uh, for all the wonderful products they have. We used an Equalizer hitch on our last trailer. wasn't totally necessary, but with a you know, full max capacity trailer at 8,800 pounds, plus all the crap on the back of our truck and bikes and everything else, it did help significantly with the sway. I'm a big fan of it for the sway control and uh, the weight distribution control. But this trailer's a thousand pounds lighter and we don't have as much stuff that we used to carry around so I chose not to get an equalizer hitch on this trailer simply because this F-350 doesn't really need it. Unboxing the chocks here. As you can see right away they're packed in here really nice. Um, they come with a cotter pin to adjust things with and these things are substantial and they look very good. So this cotter pin moves uh, but this pops down between your tires. It looks really well. Let's see what the instructions here say. I'm going to put these in the trailer and see how they work. So what it tells you to do is put them in here, remove the pin, slide them in your tire, spread them out as far as you can get them, note the hole wherever you're located, and you pull it out and you put it in the next hole over. I'm gonna pull it out, separate it by one hole, reinsert the pin, see if I can get them in here again. Yep, now they're wedged in there really nice and tight. And then to pop this out, pop it out. So now this cotter pin is set to these tires, and I know every time I can use that feature and get them under my tires. And I have one for both sides. This eliminates the rocking back and forth, particularly if you have an Airstream that's been lifted. This side might look a little different already because I'm sitting on the single snap pad, so you know snap pads from your stabilizers or, or leveling jacks, but this is a snap pad that's supposed to go on top of your, I call them Lego blocks, but I use them on this side because I need to come up one inch on this side, so one, one of these under each tire gives me one inch, one of these under one tire gives me a half inch. So I may have to adjust this because of these 
snap pads give extra space so you can see that it doesn't fit nearly as tight as the other side did. So I would have to adjust this side out a hole or two. All good. The one step chalk is aptly named because it's just one step to lock it in place. I like it. Whoever named it, good job. I gotta say that after using those fastway chalks for a number of trips and stops along our 3,000 mile journey from west coast to east coast, they are by far my absolute favorite chalks so far. So a couple weeks ago, Erin, Blair's sister Erin, sent her a TikTok of somebody using these special pans in an RV, space saving pans. And uh, Blair showed them to me, and I said, oh, that looks like a pretty interesting deal. Just so happened, we had uh, broken a lid to our big pan, so we are in the market for some pants. So guess what? Amazon to the rescue. 36 hours later, they're sitting in our kitchen. I'm going to review these unboxing, and as we cook with them, we'll check them out. But the purpose of it is a space-saving device that... Is very lightweight. We have been using um, my grandmother's, actually my great grandmother's cast iron skillet, and for a while, and we'll keep that. But there's some other pans that we've had that I've had for a while, but they are heavy and um, take up some space in our cabinet. These are all extremely lightweight, and what I really, really like about them is the handle removes. And they sell it in a six-piece kit and a 12-piece kit. We got the 12-piece kit because we thought we needed two handles and two lids, or a bigger lid, compared to what the six-piece came with. So, uh, Karot is the name of it. And here's the unboxing. So, right away I have a lid here. It has a silicone-type surround um, lid sealing, I call it. And I have a small plastic lid of some sort. Here's a smaller, smaller one. A small bowl. White granite die cast is what it's called. So these all nest within each other really nicely. And they are surprisingly light too. And here's a small pan. Here's another storage lid. So what's cool about these is you can use them to cook in and then you can just pop one of these on and use it for storage. Here's the two, what I'm assuming are two handles. I'll get those in a second. Here's your pretty large cooking pan and bowl. So they all have the metal bottom here. And here's the big cooking pan. So, see how all this fits together. So this is a really cool feature here. And you can clip it on the pan. You can clip it on any bowl at any location, and now you have a handle for your pan. So if you order the six-piece kit, it comes with one handle and then half of these bowls. The two, the 12-piece comes with all the extra. So again, I don't know that we need all the extra, but I did definitely want this bigger lid here. I'm pretty excited to cook with it. What are we gonna cook first? I don't know what's on. Nothing. <laughs> we got. I'm gonna throw out some meat. So, I got my symbols here. So, if you have a handle in the pan, you can still cover the pot. Look at that. So that fits both those pots and the small one. And you have a little steam steam hole if you need to cover something. But definitely a fan of how this all nests together. Blair's making the same face that I am. Hmm. <laughs> it all it all seems to fit nicely. We have been separating our pans with these little uh, pot separator things so far. So the only issue at the moment is where how, this one doesn't really nest into anything, but that's not that big a deal to store. And these handles will just pop right in. So let's see how this fits in our cabinet. Okay, so you can see our pots and pans down here have these little pot separators. We have some, we have a new pack of three or four here. So these are the ones we've been using for a while. 
This is my Amaro Lagasse set from whew, 2002 or three. It's 20 years old. It's been through some, it's boiled a lot of water. And here's the cast iron skillet that's, I don't know, 60 years old. It's been around for a minute. This is not going anywhere, by the way. But these things fit quite beautifully on the shelf. And Blair's nodding in approval back there. Look at all that extra space. <laughs> like, you don't have to have the handles dinging around. So that's one of the biggest issues is these handles because they, the stuff will slide. So I'll put one of these down on the bottom and I may still keep these separated with a pot separator just because from a traveling standpoint, the rattling issue. Uh, but I am, I hope they cook as well as they fit in my cabinet. But otherwise, this is a pretty fantastic RV upgrade, I must say. All right, drum roll here. How much do these things cost? $99 for this whole set. If you get the six pieces, it's only $69. Huh, who knew? So, I'm I'm down to try it for 100 bucks. It's just me. Yeah. Particularly for an RV. And it's, like, made specifically for RVs. You can find yours in the link down below. I made some eggs in our new... Carote, as I guess how you say it, um, cookware. And I must say, I opened the cabinet back and everything was stacked nice and pretty there. Pulled it out really easily. Clipped my little handle on really easily. I put a little bit of butter in there and then cracked six eggs into it, cooked it up. No stick, no mess, no residue. And I'm about to wash it and stack it back. So first initial cooking, uh, it was butter and eggs, but it worked out really well. So stay tuned for more cooking with Brad and Blair. So I've just finished cooking for the I don't know, third, maybe fourth time uh, with our new pots and pans here. And I got to tell you, I'm in love. No stick, cleans easy, cooks great, pops the handles off. Super easy. I love the way it stores in our cabinets. I'm just all around very, very happy with this product so far. So if you're uh, in an RV and you don't yet have these pots and pans in your rig, you should probably consider it. Good morning. I'm out here with this uh, cool Ford truck here that we got. And sitting on the ground there is a front hitch, front receiver hitch. It's from Torcliff Central. You might remember them from... Uh, previous videos, we had a receiver hitch on the back of our old trailer and the uh, side load stabilizers on this truck that we currently still use. But I didn't put a receiver hitch on the bumper of this truck because the rear hatch and I didn't lift it up. So I'm going to put one on the front of this truck. Sometimes it's very handy to use this when you're backing a trailer into a spot. You can hook it on the front and push your trailer with your truck instead of backing it up. Um, and other times it's just handy from a tailgating perspective. You can put stuff out here. Um, working on the truck, you can put a, put a step inside your receiver hitch there, but I'm already used this for it, and I'm going to install it. Join me. The last part of the equation is deciding do I want my tag, my front tag to be here or put it back on here, up here, which I don't mind. I like it up here and it's fine down here. Um, but I think I'm just going to reinstall it right up here. Here's the new hitch. It goes out the front right there. Um, you can see it's bolted into here. Three more bolts here on the side. I'm not quite done with the tag bracket part yet, and we'll see how that turns out. But uh, it looks pretty good under here, very sturdy. And if you need something like this on the front of your truck, this is a great alternative. Plug and play kind of installs, just taking the bumper off. And depending on the type of truck you have. So I have the Platinum Edition, which has the uh, 
adaptive cruise control and all that kind of mess. So there's some extra sensors up here that's not on another one. Fog lights is up here as well. So uh, those things can be troublesome. All in all, this this whole process took about two hours to do. But anyway, it's a, it's a good, good opportunity. Um, it is a two inch receiver hitch. You can put a thousand pounds on it. According to torque lift manufacturing labels that's on there. Um, but I think it's a it's a good addition to the truck and you know I could have kept my bike rack and put bikes up here I could put a stand up here can put a um, step to climb up in the engine with and do work minor the things you could use it for but I like it I think it's a neat addition and thank you very much Torque Lift Central for allowing me to check these things out let's finish this up